This video is brought to you by Project Da Vinci, our second YouTube channel where we will be covering the incredible engineering marvels of our time. We just published a video on the Falcon 9 rocket. So if you like what we do over here, go over to Project Da Vinci and hit subscribe over there as well. Between the time we wrote the script and actually got time to record it, there's been all kinds of breaking news, so we'll try to put links in the description as best we can. But this story is in flux. And we thought, what better way than to kind of start at the beginning? So bear with us. We'll cover the history of Nikola and then get into more of the current events, if you will. In the world of sustainable vehicles, competition has largely been the fuel of innovation, with Tesla emerging as the industry leader. Vying for Tesla's crown is Nikola Motors, who recently went IPO in June of 2020. At first glance, Nikola Motors seems to be the perfect arch rival for Tesla, with both companies pulling inspiration from the 19th century inventor Nikola Tesla. But beyond the name and similar business model, the parallels between the two companies end, as Nikola Motors has so far generated more controversy than true innovation. Nikola Motors, founded by Trevor Milton in 2015, recently went public via a reverse merger with Vector IQ in June 4th, 2020. The company's main goal is to do for the commercial and consumer trucking industry what Tesla has done for the automobile, using hydrogen fuel cells as opposed to batteries. While the merger has some investors and tech enthusiasts excited, others see the move as simply the latest in a long line of controversies related to the company. The merger boosted the company's valuation significantly, shoving Nikola Motors into the limelight as a top competitor for Tesla. And at first glance, that appears to be an accurate assessment. There's just one little problem. As of the time of this video, not only has Nikola Motors yet to produce a single vehicle, they don't even have a factory built to begin construction. Back in 2016, Milton announced that Nikola Motors would begin production on their Nikola One semi-truck by 2019, with models available to sell by 2020. The company even began collecting pre-orders for the truck, raking in over $3 billion in refundable reservations. But the company would not even break ground on their production facility until August of this year, 2020. Nikola now states that their truck won't likely hit the road until 2024 at the earliest. The company did unveil a prototype of the Nikola One back in 2016, but even that floor model was more sensation than substance. While Milton claimed the prototype was able to drive under its own power. We will have a, a chain on the, on the seats to prevent people from coming in just for the safety. I don't want someone to end up doing something and driving this truck off the stage. Reports later revealed that the truck was missing major components such as the drivetrain and well, the very fuel cell around which the entire company is built. Compare that to Tesla, which had developed and sold a thousand roadsters by the time they first went public in June 2010. While Tesla certainly has its own history of blowing through deadlines and falling short on production goals, over the last 10 years, the company has steadily increased production. Most importantly, Tesla has always placed their products and vision first. But an underdeveloped prototype in and of itself is not the worst thing in the world. Unfortunately, when it comes to Nikola Motors, the red flags don't end there. In February 2020, the company announced that they would begin developing a consumer-oriented pickup truck called the Badger, a truck that the company claims will replace the Ford F-150, America's best-selling pickup truck for over 30 years. The announcement sent Nikola Corp stock soaring, with the company boasting over $10 billion in revenue from pre-orders. Peek behind the curtain, however, and it seems that these claims may once again be nothing more but smoke and mirrors. Unlike Tesla, who required a $100 deposit to pre-order the Cybertruck, but actually showed one in person and even let people drive in it, Nikola's Badger has never been shown except in renders, and they required $5,000 per deposit. To add more heat to this controversy, Nikola has yet to produce a single Badger truck. Trevor Milton has claimed that they have prototypes, but he hasn't shown anybody and he says that they're running around somewhere in Arizona. He even announced plans to unveil a prototype Badger at Nikola World by the end of 2020. However, for the time being, all that exists of this vehicle are digital renders on the company's website. As news of the fact that Nikola hasn't really built anything yet started to circulate in investing circles, Nikola had a wise decision to partner with General Motors to be their OEM who would actually be the ones to build the Badger. But the problem here is that Nikola claimed to have really breakthrough battery technology and other technological IP that they were boasting about. And in this deal with GM, they've decided to build the truck exclusively with GM's 
technology. The Ultium technology stack for GM, which includes GM's batteries and drive trains and inverters and all the rest. So the question really becomes, what is Nikola doing with the Badger? It seems they're more of a design house than an actual manufacturing company. One thing that has always set Tesla apart from other companies is their commitment to their larger vision. When it came to their electric cars, for instance, they took upon themselves to develop and construct recharging infrastructure around the country. Over the last few years, Tesla has constructed over 1,500 charging stations worldwide and plan to continue building more. Nikola's cornerstone is the hydrogen fuel cell, supposedly a cheaper and more efficient and more sustainable alternative to both gasoline-powered engines and even electric batteries. However, as of right now in the US, there are only 48 fuel cell recharging stations, 43 of which are in California. A quick glance at Nikola Motors website gives the impression that the US is littered with fueling stations. What the website fails to indicate is that these are locations where the company intends to build refueling stations. How many fueling stations has the company even began building so far? You guessed it, zero. So far, Nikola Motors has claimed that money from its public offering will fuel these projects and production centers, but so far, the company has provided nothing but speculation. Of course, the company can only be as strong and reliable as its leadership. Certain inconsistencies in interviews have led many to question Nikola's bold, ambitious leader, Trevor Milton. To begin with, Milton has claimed in some interviews that, like Tesla, Nikola Motors plans to vertically integrate for production. That's incredible because we're really the only company that has been vertically integrated from the beginning to the end. We own our own hydrogen facility that we're building. We own our own plant, our own conversion, our own distribution, and now our own manufacturing of the truck. However, there's been tons of controversy around everything that they've claimed to build themselves. For example, they claim that they build their own inverters and in a lot of their renders and showings of the truck, they actually were caught putting tape over the inverter that was bought by a company called Cascadia. And when they were called out on this, they claimed that they never officially said that that particular inverter was built by Nikola, only that they had plans of building an inverter in the future. The nuance and the deceptions only appear to get worse when you consider the fact that this company that has plans to vertically integrate like Tesla is completely outsourcing the entire production of the Badger pickup truck. Apparently their battery tech, the inverters, the drivetrain, the motors, all of it will be built by GM. So it makes you wonder what exactly it is that Nikola does. These contradictions have led some to wonder whether Milton is trying to be intentionally misleading or if he simply doesn't understand what these terms actually mean. Our fuel cell is a PEM. So Paul Echo, Mango, whatever, I don't know the terminology, I'll let you guys figure that out. PEM, fuel cell casting doubt on his capabilities altogether. Beyond odd, contradictory interviews, Milton's own behavior hasn't done much to win over skeptics. Sure, Musk has made a lot of bold claims, but he's always backed it up. We have the Model 3, we have the Model Y. They're building the Gigafactory in Austin, Texas for the Cybertruck, and you can expect those on the road in about a year's time. During the production hell for the Model 3, their first mass-produced car, he was sleeping in the factory, doing everything in his power to get Tesla on the right track. I sleep on the couch over there. So you're just laying here on yeah. the couch? Yeah. Last time I was here, I actually slept literally on the floor because the couch was too narrow. Yeah, I was going to say. And Elon, I have to say, it's not even a comfortable couch either. No, it's terrible. <laughs> this is a, not a good couch. The reason he slept on the floor wasn't because he couldn't go across the road and be at a hotel. It was because he wanted his circumstances to be worse than anyone else at the company. Whenever they felt pain, he wanted his pain to be worse. Compare this to Milton, who offloaded approximately $70 million in shares in what many financial experts have called the red flag of all red flags. Before the company has generated any revenue, before they have sold any products, before they have even built their manufacturing facilities, the founder not only sold off shares, but used them to purchase a home worth over $32 million. Currently the most expensive home ever sold in the state of Utah. Calling into question not only Milton's confidence in his own company, but his commitment to the same environmental concerns upon which the company is supposedly founded. Milton is not blind to the fact that his actions and those of his company have raised some eyebrows. In a recent interview, he noted his hopes to win over public support for his company, including finalizing OEM partnerships and finally unveiling product prototypes at the forthcoming Nikola World event. As it stands, however, the company's primary product is speculation. 
To be completely fair, it's entirely possible that Nikola Motors may truly follow on the footsteps of Tesla and eventually produce world-changing vehicles that silence the skeptics. How incredible would it be to have two powerful companies competing to provide innovative products that serve consumers as well as the environment? But as it stands, the differences between Tesla and companies like Nikola Motors are clear. Where Tesla has built theirs on actual production and true innovation, Nikola has built its value and reputation as a company on talk and speculation. If you've been following the news, then you know there's been a lot of controversy. There is a report out by the Hindenburg Research Group that calls Nikola a patent fraud. Now, to be fair, the group is short-selling Nikola, so they have intentions or they have benefit from the fact that their stock price goes down. But everything in the report seems to be true. Even Nikola, who offered a rebuttal as a official statement a couple days ago, and we'll have the links to all this stuff for you to check out, because some of the stuff is beyond belief. Even in their official rebuttal, they actually don't deny any of the claims. For example, the Nikola One in motion, the truck actually moving, they called it. They don't deny that it was not actually rolling downhill. The story was they took this truck, they towed it to the top of a hill and just let it roll down, recorded it at an angle to make it look like it was going uphill. And in the press release said, here is the Nikola One in motion. Technically, that wasn't a lie but clearly it's very deceptive and super shady. The part I find most damning is a lot of the social media posts that Trevor Milton has put out in the last couple of days have been absolutely unacceptable for a professional and a leader of a company. In some Instagram posts from his ranch, he's come out cursing and calling blame on people who have questioned the fact that him appointing his brother as the chief of their infrastructure systems um, was a bit short-sighted because from what people can gather, Travis Milton, his brother, did some concrete work as a contractor in Hawaii. And why that would make him a leader to be running their hydrogen infrastructure plans uh, doesn't exactly make sense. So it seems like kind of a good old boys network and the, the amount of red flags and all the other things that I find questionable about the company are way too much for me to ever consider being an investor. This has been a complete and utter soap opera and it has been all the rave on Twitter. All I see on Twitter is people making fun of this company at this point. The reality is all of us should want more and more companies to succeed. Great companies like Lucid Motors. And however this Nikola thing turns out, we have to remember that if anybody ever says, you see Nikola, they're proof that all this green energy, innovative research and technology companies are a fraud. You gotta make sure that people know there's a difference between one bad company potentially and the onslaught of new companies that will be coming. As I mentioned, I'll put post to all of the official reports and the rebuttals and all that stuff. Plus, if you want to watch a lot of really breaking news information, check out Solving the Money Problem. He does a great job of really being right at the forefront of this. We're not going to cover topical news that closely on this channel, so definitely check out his channel. He's been blown up. Uh, that's a good source for a lot of this information. Also, a big shout out to all of our patrons on Patreon for your support. It means so much to us. We have plans to make more and more content, and it is not possible without your support on Patreon. So thank you so much. And if you want to be a rock star supporter of the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. And as I mentioned, if you want to see more from us, we have a second channel, Project Da Vinci, and that's where we're going to have some of the great stories of our time. Falcon 9 is out. We're going to talk about airplanes and aircraft, dams, whatever the case might be, all the cool stuff happening in our world and all the great stories around them. So as always, leave us your comments. I'm dying to know and try to keep it civil because this should be a place for discourse to have some fun, but um, keep it under control. Stay classy. But leave us your comments, hit that like button, subscribe, join us for the ride. We have a lot of good stuff coming out. I'm Ricky with Tuba Da Vinci, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.